All right, folks, welcome back. I wanted to start doing some videos to cover a few bits of gear, a few items that will be a bit more reasonably priced, a bit more economical, just for the average person. I can review as many bits of kit from Cry and Arcteryx, uh, uh, you know, as anyone likes, but it's not useful for the majority of people. So what I want to cover today is an item that sort of hits the, the peak performance to cost ratio. I'm, I'd imagine a lot of you are familiar with the, the concept of diminishing returns. Basically, you spend money up to a certain point at which, at which point you will see performance increases and durability and general effectiveness increases. When you go beyond a certain point, you spend more and more money for less and less returns. So there is an optimum, a sort of an apex, as it were, along that curve. And I want to try and cover a few items that fit into that category. Today we've got the Leo Cola Explorer trouser. For those of you not familiar, Leo Cola are a brand out of Germany. They make stuff for certain agencies within the German government. They don't manufacture their stuff in Germany, which is a shame, but then things would cost a lot more if they did. So they're outsourced somewhere sort of um, around, around East Asia. So I'm gonna tell you the price of these straight away rather than save it to the end. I picked up this particular pair from flectarm.co.uk, which are a gear retailer that I've been using for pushing 12 years and their customer service has been uniformly excellent that whole time. They're really good. I will link to them down in the description. This particular model of trouser over on Flectarm costs at the most £45. A few of the different colour and camo variants uh, cost less than that but this particular Atex IX pair were about 45, maybe like 45 pounds and a few pence, but yeah, pretty good for what you're getting and I'll explain what you're actually getting now. The key thing with these is the fabric. These are a 50-50 Nyko blend. There are two main types of fabric you're gonna get in any sort of camouflage, tactical color clothing, poly cotton and nylon cotton, usually 60-40 polyester cotton and 50-50 nylon cotton. 50-50 Nyko is what Cry, Arcteryx Leaf, Patagonia, blah, blah, blah. That's what they all use. The polycotton stuff is kind of the bottom end of what you would consider appropriate for duty police military usage. Nyko is much better in terms of resisting abrasion, general durability, keeping its color throughout washes, um, and just a lot of other important factors. It's a ripstop fabric, and just generally it will last you and serve you for better and far longer than poly cotton will. Generally what will happen is you'll get stuff made in poly cotton up to a certain price point. Then once you spend above a certain amount of money, you get into the Nyko garments. And that's really what you want to go for. To put it in a bit of context, I would say at the bottom, you've got your sort of airsoft copies of like Cry G3s, which I would not even recommend for airsoft because uh, they'll just fade and tear on you real fast. They're pretty much just for standing around posing for pictures. Then you've got your sort of commercial, basic duty poly cotton stuff, which is what all British issue PCS MTP is made of. It's pretty bad fabric. It's just barely acceptable for the job. Then you've got your, your baseline of what I would say is what you want to aim for, for real world duty, whatever you want to call it, usage. And that will be a, a nylon cotton blend. And this, this particular pair of trousers really fits into that category of the, the baseline of what you want in terms of real world usage and it will last you incredibly well if you're just using it for hobby stuff, airsoft, paintball, whatever. So again, it's a 50-50 Nyko at an extremely good price and straight away, that's a good thing. Stitching wise, it's bar tacked where it needs to be, I would say. You're looking at about 8 to 10 stitches per inch. For some context, Cry are generally 10 to 12. So it's a little bit less but not that much, definitely still acceptable. Once you start getting down to about six or seven stitches per inch, any sort of tactical apparel load bearing kit, that's going beyond what I would recommend. That's not really acceptable for any sort of uh, hardware usage. Design wise, what they've basically done with these is taken the Cry Gen 2 Army Custom Combat Pant and simplified it right, right down to the bare bones basics in order to keep the price down. Obviously these, when they were in production, cost about 200 bucks. These are significantly less. You can see just the, the profile of the waistline, 
the actual the construction of the area around the waist closure of the fly, the front belt loops, the main side cargo pockets are pretty similar. Uh, and at the back, the two back pockets on the Leo Cola are basically identical to the Kreis. So we'll work from the bottom down because on the ankles, you've got nothing on the Leo Colos, no drawstrings, no Velcro tab, no elastic, nothing. Um, if that bothers you because you need to keep stuff out of your ankles, this isn't going to be for you. Personally, I'm fine with it. On the knees, two layers of fabric. This panel here is stitched on top, so there's actually the main body of the trouser and an extra layer of fabric. So you, where you're kneeling, you've got two layers there for it to potentially wear through. They kind of missed a trick here because they could have just put some Velcro opening down the bottom here. Then you could put neoprene padding and you'd have a built-in knee pad. They haven't. You could get that modified. It's a bit of a downer, but no front of the thigh pocket. Pretty generous standard front pockets though. Belt loops, at least suitable for a two inch belt, decently wide, good amount of stitching. You've got little hanger points on there as cries do. Velcro above, fly, standard zip on there. <laughs> Nothing much to write home about, it, it works. That's all I can tell you when you need to take a piss, does the job. The main feature pocket-wise is obviously your thigh cargo pocket. Two pieces of Velcro, no buttons, so if you're maritime or airborne, I guess this probably won't be for you either. But two pieces of Velcro, similar to Cry Design. You've got two pleats on the pocket, on the front for expansion, another one on the side. No features internal to the pockets. There's no elastic retention or anything like that. They're just plain inside. What I do like is both of these pockets have zips down the front that, to access them. And when you're sat down, it's incredibly handy. Way easier to get into them via those zips than it is going in through the top Velcro flap. Other than that, these are plain, just the absolute bare bones features, but well made. And uh, that, that for me is what makes them a good option, really. Spin around onto the back. Simple one piece of Velcro on each pocket on your backside. They're a little bit narrow to get into, but they're very deep, which means you could lose things in them a little bit, I think, but um, not the end of the world. High waist at the back there, no padding. Got your three belt loops again. Pretty decently made, good reinforced stitching on them. There's nothing else to show you on the back, but then at this price point, that's pretty much what you're gonna be expecting. Now you won't get Nyko in every variance of these. The Flecton ones are a polycotton blend of some kind, but it seems to be common for German issued uniforms in Flecton. So you wanna check out exactly what fabric you're getting when you look at these online. Generally, the polycotton ones are cheaper. I think the problem is you can easily pay more for a pair of LBX that are polycotton, not stitched as well, frankly not designed as well. It just happens that like LBX happen to have better social media marketing and stuff and people buy those, but these absolutely tramps them for less money. Uh, so that is a complete no brainer in my mind. I'll link in the description to where you can pick them up. Quite a few commercial camos available. It definitely would have been nice to have an extra panel in the groin, um, ability to put in knee pads, some slight alterations to the pockets would be good, but the price for the quality of construction and quality materials is about the best I've ever come across. So if you want to make your pound dollar euro go as far as possible, check these out. As I say, one of the strongest options I've seen all my social media and bullshit is down in the description box below. If you've got any other recommendations along these sort of lines that you've seen, please let me know in the comments. Any other questions, again, down in the comments. I'll, I'll always answer them best as I can. Cheers for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.